Hello students, in this video we will study different ways by which drug is absorbed or transported across the cell membrane. Now this video is a fifth in the series of videos on general pharmacology. Now absorption is the movement of drug into the bloodstream after its administration. Now unlike the intravenous route where the drug is injected directly into the blood, a drug has to pass across the cell membrane to reach the blood circulation. So the most important criteria for a drug to get absorbed is to pass through the cell membrane. Now as we all know cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer and proteins are found embedded or inserted in between the phospholipid molecules. Now these proteins they act as carriers or they act as transporters of drugs. Now absorption can occur primarily uh, in four different ways. First is a passive diffusion, second is a facilitated diffusion, third is the active transport which in turn is of two types primary active transport and secondary active transport and the fourth uh, process or the way by which the absorption of a drug occurs is the endocytosis. So now let's uh, understand all these four different ways one by one. Uh, now let's uh, first talk about the passive diffusion. Now it is termed as passive as the transportation of drug across the cell membrane does not require energy. Now look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram is of a cell. Now uh, this is the cell membrane, uh, this is a cell membrane, now it is a bilayer, uh, it is a bilayer membrane that is made up of a phospholipid molecule, so it is termed as a, a phospholipid uh, bilayer cell membrane and protein molecules shown here in the red color, uh, they are embedded in the matrix uh, of uh, cell membrane. Now um, this is a cell cytoplasm, this is an intracellular fluid. And outside the cell is present the uh, extracellular fluid. Now here uh, the drug is present in the extracellular fluid. Now here and there in between uh, the phospholipid molecules are present the aqueous pores. Now aqueous pores are here shown in the blue color. Now passive diffusion is the transport of drug uh, along the concentration gradient that is the drug moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Now once the drug is administered uh, the drug is present in the extracellular fluid so it is present in high concentration in the extracellular fluid and the drug moves from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration that is the drug moves from uh, the extracellular fluid towards the cell cytoplasm. Now the unionized form of drug uh, are, is lipid soluble or it is lipophilic and it diffuses rapidly through the phospholipid molecules. Whereas the ionized form of drug is water soluble or hydrophilic and diffuses rapidly through the aqueous pores. Now no energy and no carriers are required for the transportation of drug and since the uh, drug molecules they readily uh, pass through the cell membrane the lipophilic they readily pass through the phospholipid uh, molecules and hydrophilic they rapidly pass through the aqueous pores. This transport is not saturable and large quantities of drug can be transported by this method. Now let's uh, understand the facilitator diffusion. Now here the transportation of drug across the cell membrane is facilitated by the use of proteins as carriers. Now unlike the passive diffusion, carriers are required for the transportation of drug across the cell membrane. And these carriers are proteins which are present in the cell membrane. So facilitated diffusion is carrier mediated diffusion. Uh, again look at this diagram. This diagram shows the cell membrane, uh, the phospholipid bilayer 
and uh, the carrier proteins uh, they are inserted or they are embedded in the phospholipid bilayer so these carrier protein are here shown in the uh, red color now this is the drug that is shown here in the green color now uh, the drug binds to the carrier proteins so see the uh, drug here binds to the carrier proteins and the carrier proteins undergo conformational change now as they undergo conformational change the drug is transported inside the cell now in the facilitated diffusion similar to the passive diffusion the drug is transported along the concentration gradient that is drug is transported from the higher concentration of drug to the lower concentration of drug and the transportation does not require energy and now apart from this large molecules are transported by the process of facilitated diffusion now unlike the passive diffusion facilitated diffusion is saturable as the transportation of drug requires availability of carrier proteins now the third type of transport method is the active transport now it is termed as active as this transportation of drug across the cell membrane requires energy and uh, this transportation requires special carrier molecules or the special proteins called as transmembrane proteins for the transportation of drug across the cell membrane now as uh, discussed earlier transportation is energy dependent and it usually occurs Uh, the transportation usually occurs against the concentration gradient that is from the lower concentration of drug to the higher concentration of drug now drugs uh, similar to endogenous substances like ions vitamins sugar amino acids are transported by the active transport and since this transportation depends upon the availability of uh, carriers or the proteins the process is saturable and cannot occur in the absence of carriers now active transport is of two types primary active transport and the secondary active transport uh, now let's uh, first understand the primary active transport look at this figure now this is a resting cell now membrane potential inside the cell is minus 40 to minus 80 millivolts now that is it is negative now concentration of sodium ions is more in the extracellular fluid whereas concentration of potassium ions is more in the intracellular fluid now here in the case of active transport transportation takes place against the concentration gradient that is the drug it moves from the region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration that means sodium is transported from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid where its concentration is already high and potassium is transported from the extracellular extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid where the concentration of potassium is already high uh, now look at this diagram now this diagram depicts Uh, the primary active transport this is the cell membrane and uh, this is the sodium potassium atpase it is an ionic pump which is made up of proteins now it is a pump as it transports uh, sodium and potassium against their concentration gradient with the uh, utilization of energy that is sodium is transported outside the cell while potassium is transported inside the cell now this transmembrane protein or the sodium potassium atpase contains one atp binding site on its cytoplasmic surface and this transportation of sodium and potassium is mediated or it is driven by the hydrolysis of adenosine triphosphate so atp it uh, it is hydrolyzed to produce adp and apart from this there is release of energy now energy that is released because of the hydrolysis of atp is utilized by the pump for the transportation of sodium outside the cell and potassium inside the cell 
So this primary active transport, it requires energy and the energy is obtained by the hydrolysis of ATP. Uh, now uh, look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram explains the secondary active transport. Now this diagram shows transportation of sodium and transportation of glucose. Now the, these transportations are mediated by sodium glucose co-transporter in uh, short SGLT. Now very important to understand that here sodium is transported along its concentration gradient whereas glucose is transported against the concentration gradient. Now when the sodium is transported along the concentration gradient energy is derived by the cell and that energy is utilized by the cell for the transportation of glucose against the concentration gradient. Now how it happens let's understand that. Uh, now uh, sodium glucose uh, co-transporter it transports sodium from the extracellular fluid towards the intracellular fluid that is along the concentration gradient. Now as we know that the membrane potential inside the cell is minus 40 to minus 80 millivolts that is negative. Now movement of sodium ions inside the cell increases the membrane potential and the membrane potential gradually becomes less negative and finally the membrane potential becomes positive that is electrochemical energy is generated. Now this electrochemical energy that is generated by the cell is utilized for the transportation of glucose against the concentration gradient. So uh, this transportation of glucose is dependent upon the transportation of sodium and since both sodium and glucose are transported in one in the same direction this transporter or this transportation is termed as sodium glucose co-transport. So here in secondary active transport electrochemical energy that is derived by the cell by the transportation of sodium is utilized for the transportation of glucose. So this type of transport is termed as secondary active transport. Now the fourth type of transport mechanism is the endocytosis. Now exceptionally large size drugs are transported across the cell membrane by this process. For example, vitamin B12. Now look at this diagram. This is the cell membrane. Now the cell membrane forms a cavity and this cavity encloses the drug and it forms a, a granule or it forms a vesicle. The vesicle is then engulfed inside the cell transporting the drug from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid and the process is called as endocytosis. So this is in brief on different ways by which the drug is absorbed or transported. Now if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.